In this uh, section, we are talking of another uh, passive process of transport that is osmosis. In osmosis, it is the movement of solvent particles. So here, movement of solvent particles takes place from the region of its higher concentration to its lower concentration across a semi-permeable membrane across a semi-permeable membrane till it reaches equilibrium so till equilibrium so here we are talking of movement of solvent particles in diffusion and facilitated diffusion we talked about movement of solute particles here it is solvent particle and these solvent particles move from a region of their higher concentration to a region of their lower concentration membrane is also important here and this movement will take place till it reaches equilibrium to understand this let us talk about say we separate two liquids through a semi-permeable membrane and in one region there is a dilute solution and in the other region there is a concentrated solution. The movement of solvent will take place from the region where water, if you are talking of water as a solvent, in dilute solution water free water molecules are more as compared to concentrated. So from dilute solution region water molecules would move from this compartment to this that is from dilute to concentrated so if we are defining osmosis in terms of solvent particle we would say it is movement of solvent particle from the region of its higher concentration to its lower concentration the second definition could be movement of solvent particles from a dilute to a concentrated so from a dilute to concentrated solution here we have changed the definition in terms of solution so here we are talking in terms of solution in the first one we talked about the solvent itself third important thing a dilute solution in terms of tonicity or concentration is termed as hypotonic and more concentrated is termed as hypertonic solution. So our third definition can be movement of solvent particles from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution and other two things remain the same that is through a semi-permeable membrane till it reaches equilibrium. So third method or third way of defining it is movement from hypo tonic solution to hypertonic solution across a semi-permeable membrane till it reaches equilibrium. So in all three we are talking of movement of solvent particles. In the first case we talked of solvent particles wherever solvent are more from that region to wherever the solvent is less to that region. In the second one we talked about solution. So from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution and third again we are talking of concentration only so from hypotonic to hypertonic. Now let us take some situations where we place plant cells and animal cells into these solutions that is hypertonic and hypotonic and we will also talk of a term which is called isotonic. So let us talk of these cells being placed in these three different types of solutions. So when we place these cells in these solutions, what is going to happen? Say we are talking of animal cells. Animal cells placed in three types of solutions. First, isotonic. That means the concentration of the material which is inside the cell that is cytoplasm is same as that of the outer medium 
this would be isotonic. So here the outer medium is having the same concentration as that of the cell content. Second situation is we are keeping the cell, animal cell again in a hypotonic solution. That means the cellular content is more concentrated as compared to the outer medium. And third is we are keeping the cell in a hypertonic solution. That means the inner content of the cell is less concentrated. So here outer and inner are same. Here we will write down two more examples. In case of human beings, 0.9% sodium chloride solution and 5% glucose solution are isotonic to blood. So this is, these two are considered as isotonic. That means if outside is 0.9, inner is also same concentration. In this case, the movement of solvent particle does take place. But if two particles or two solvent molecules go out, two will go in. So there is equal movement of particles in and out. So on an average, we say that there is no net movement. But at that moment, few particles can go out and two, if here, two are going out, two will come in. In the second situation, as we said, water moves from hypotonic condition to hyper. So here, if outer is hypo, the inner has to be more concentrated. And as solvent or water moves from hypo to hyper, water will move into the cell. This condition is known as endosmosis. This will result into swelling up of the cell. The cell will become turgid. So cell becomes turgid. Turgid is a condition when there is too much or extra, extra water which has gone into the cell. And because this is an animal cell, there is no cell wall or any protective membrane, this cell will swell, expand and ultimately it will rupture. So this is what happens in case of an animal cell. If an animal cell is placed in hypotonic condition or media, water or solvent will move from hypo to hyper. That means in this situation into the cell. So we call that process endosmosis. The cell will get more water and will become turgid. Ultimately it will rupture. If this cell is placed in hypertonic condition, that means inside medium is hypotonic. So in this situation, again, osmosis takes place from hypo to hyper. So here, water is going to come out of the cell. That means exosmosis will take place. The cell will shrink. Such cells are known as flaccid cells. So it will become flaccid or it will shrink. And after shrinking, it will look crenated. Crenated cell would look something like this. It will become wrinkled and that is called crenated. So in case of RBC, if we are talking of or animal cell, we call it crenated. The cell gets crenated. Here, when it ruptures, the plasma membrane will rupture and all the content is going to come out. These broken pieces of plasma membrane are called ghosts. But this is visible only in case of animal cell because there is no protective cell wall outside these. So in isotonic condition, there would be no net movement. If 10 particles are going out, 10 will be coming in. The two solutions which are isotonic to human blood is 0.9% sodium chloride solution and 5% glucose solution. If an animal cell is kept in these type of solutions, then net movement is not there or these two will be considered as isotonic. In case of the second situation, endosmosis takes place from hypo to hyper. It becomes turgid and ultimately ruptures. 
In case of third situation, exosmosis takes place. That means water comes out, it becomes flaccid and gets crenated. Now, in the th same three situations, if we replace the animal cells with plant cells, how the situations are going to change? So, instead of animal cell, we will change it with plant cell. All these things we will erase so that we write it again fresh with the cell here. Outer mediums we are keeping the same. That means in the first situation it is isotonic and just to differentiate we are drawing the plant cell like this. Here also plant cell and here also there is a plant cell. Now isotonic means there would be no net movement. So this situation is same as what we saw in case of animal cell. Here, this is hypo, inner will be hypertonic. Water moves from hypo to hyper. So here endosmosis will take place. So first step is endosmosis which is same. After this, we said the cell becomes turgid and here also it will become turgid. But in case of animal cell, we said it becomes turgid, it enlarges and ultimately it's going to burst. Here, it becomes turgid. That means the water which has gone in has started exerting pressure on the wall, but the wall, that is cell wall, exerts equal pressure on it and it is a rigid membrane. So, there is a slight change in the cell structure. That means it might just become a little bulgy slightly but there is no significant detectable change so it becomes turgid but it will not rupture so here the cell does not rupture and this is due to presence of rigid cell wall third situation Water moves from hypo to hyper. In this case, exosmosis will take place. So one thing, first thing is same, exosmosis. Cell will become flaccid, but here there are certain distinct changes which are going to take place inside the cell. So these two that is isotonic and hypotonic condition are same but here we are talking of few things now let me draw the cell slightly bigger we know in plant cell there is a big vacuum a nucleus here and other organ when water comes out the water actually comes out from the vacuum that is the sap so here when exosmosis is taking place, the content of the vacuole are coming out. That is, exosmosis is taking place. Due to this, the vacuole shrinks. The vacuole is going to become smaller. And with the vacuole, even the cytoplasmic content is going to detach from the cell. So if we draw that situation, this is the smaller vacuole now. And the cytoplasmic content has also detached. Here the cytoplasm was all over. Now that cytoplasm has gone to one side. Such a cell is termed as plasmolyzed. So this is a plasmolyzed state or cell. And the process is known as plasmolysis. After some time, if we place this plasmolyzed cell in fresh water. Suppose we take a situation and where we are keeping this plasmolyzed cell. That means its vacuole is here and cytoplasmic content on one side. And we are keeping it in hypotonic solution or in say water. As water has come out from this sap or from this vacuole, the inner condition has become hypertonic. So inner is hyper. 
In this situation, water will move in. That means here endosmosis will take place and the cell will regain all its water and will come back to its normal situation like this. We will call this process as deplasmolysis. So this process was plasmolysis and here when we are keeping a plasmolyzed cell in water, in fresh water or a hypotonic solution, it gets back to its normal condition. This process is known as deplasmolysis and the cell will be called deplasmolyzed. Here we saw that the shape of the cell does not change in any of the condition, neither in hypotonic solution nor in hypertonic and this is because of presence of that rigid cell wall. In case of this situation, the cytoplasmic content shrinks but the cell wall remains at its position. So cell shape does not change. Whereas in case of animal cell, in one situation it ruptures and in the other situation it shrinks. So its shape changes. Here, whatever happens, happens within that cell wall. So if we keep it in normal water condition or water in uh, the plasmolyzed cell, then it will regain its water and come back to its normal situation. So behavior or the processes which take place in plant and animal cell are same, that is endo and exosmosis. But the changes which we see are different because of the structure of the cell. Now, after osmosis, we'll take up certain more processes like imbibition and those in the next.